That fresh morning started typically for the barber shop's latest staff. There were no customers yet. So the girls, taking advantage of the relatively peaceful moment, decided to pamper themselves with sweets and tea. Girls, have you seen what blouse I bought? said Goldie Chuffed. We are never gonna see such a luxury. Baby, you're flirting with Henry Miller, and his father is a major oil industrialist. Maggie pointed jealously. Is it worth to arguing about some blouse? said Tina with a sad tone, as she was considered a quiet and shy one. After her words, the girls exchanged significant glances, hiding scornful grins. The thing was that they knew about the fact that Tina grown up in the orphan house, and the only family of her was her cat Thomas. The orphan girl had never seen her parents. Tina's childhood wasn't really happy. Dreaming of the parents' care, little girl asked Santa Claus the same thing all of the time. The little Tina didn't ask for toys and sweets as many orphan kids did. That girl dreamed that one day, new parents would adapt her into their family. However, years passed and nothing changed in Tina's life. Growing up, she left the orphanage, which had become home and replaced family for her. The girl didn't have to wonder about the profession. After hairdresser courses, she got a job at a barber shop. Those giggle gossip girls were her friends for a long time, but they reluctantly included Tina in their social circle. They bragged about new clothes, as if they didn't notice Tina wearing the sell-off outfits. The gossip girls laughing at her had no doubt that Tina would live in the slums forever. Suddenly, a sharp sound of the open door interrupted the joyous gossip shutter. Girls instantly turned to see their first customer. The most amazing about it was the fact that the first customer was an old man with long, falling below ear gray hair. His clothes were old, but seemed to be clean and neat. Shuffling his trampled shoes and squinting blindly, the old man walked inside. Coughed humbly, the stranger asked the girls, Good day! Uh, can I have a haircut, please? No, sorry, it's a trend barber shop. Here we work with appointments and reserved for a month forward. Goldie lied easily. How so? You must not think. I didn't come just like that. I have money with me. Said the old man confusedly, twirling his crumpling baseball hat with a broken half cap in hands. Hey, man, you being too pushy for a street beggar. Goldie answered. Tina was embarrassed about that, so she turned to the window blushing. Goldie was the leader of their collective. That's why she reserved the right to choose the client for herself. The old man, confused even more, sniffed quietly, and the tears began to roll down his cheeks. Oh, don't make a drama out of this. Come on, leave us before we call the police, ruled Goldie, wrinkling her nose. Somehow putting on his sunburned baseball cap over his head, the old man walked out the door. At that moment, Goldie and Maggie started laughing together. About an hour passed, and each girl had already caught a couple of clients. Suddenly, that old man appeared on the doorstep again. However, this time, a young police officer, who had recently taken over, was standing next to him in a manfully looking uniform. Why are you refusing your clients? That's not good said the officer holding the old man's hand. We aren't refusing, sir. Who told you that? We just were a bit busy. Yes, um, Tina is free now, by the way, said Goldie and instantly changed. Well, okay, I'll leave you then. Mr. Bennett, I still have some stuff in the office, said the officer goodbye. Taking the comb and the scissors, Tina was waiting patiently for the old man sitting down in a chair. Maggie and Goldie were grinning snaggly, whispering behind her back. Look! Tina finally found her regular customer. Missing around in unwashed gray hair is just her level. The girl, not paying any attention to this night laughter of colleagues, gave the old man's hair a normal look. My name is Henry Bennett, ma'am. Why did your colleagues lush out of me? Fortunately, I met the police officer, Bill White. He heeded my request. The old man said. I don't know, Mr. Bennett. Maybe they're in the mood today. I'm sorry for them said the embarrassed girl. A half an hour passed, and Tina had almost finished the work. It will be thirty dollars, Mr. Bennett, Tina said smiling and looking at the result of her walk with satisfaction. Paying the check, the old man left generous tip. After that, he said goodbye gently and went from the salon. Working hours were taking long. To everyone's surprise, there were a lot of clients today, so the hairdressers sighed with relief when the shift finally ended. Walking out of the barber shop, 
Tina noticed the same old man who visited their salon that morning. He was obviously waiting for somebody and hesitantly trampling his feet. When he saw Tina, he came forward and holding her by the elbow, said in despair, Could I make the request, ma'am? I can't do it by myself. I need your help. Tina looked into the old man's eyes and saw tears in them. Listening to her intuition, the girl realized that he really was in a difficult life situation. Okay, sir, I'll go, if that's the case. Tina answered and holding the old man's hand headed to his house. As it turned out, he lived in a tiny house nearby. Entering inside, Tina was stunned to see a cradle in the living room, in which the twin babies were peacefully sleeping. When he caught guest surprised eyes, Henry Bennett heard it to say that those children were Amanda's, his granddaughter, who led a very frivolous lifestyle. Amanda's mother died in childbirth. Unfortunately, her grandparents, no matter how hard they tried, couldn't inculcate her to love the normal people values. That's why the girl grew up to burn and used to act only in her own way. Amanda left the children to me, and together with some biker moved to California. Apparently I've missed something in her nurturing. It's upsetting, because I've been working as a school teacher for about 40 years myself, and a week ago I've got a phone call from police. She died, said the old man sobbing. I won't manage it alone. I'm afraid if I die, I leave these children without any person here. They must never get into the orphanage. It isn't a good place. I can give you money for the first time. Trust me. Mr. Bennett asks, looking at the Tina's eyes hopefully. Don't worry, Mr. Bennett. I need no money. Not at all. Of course I'll try to help you. Answered Tina, tried to calm the old man down. She understood that an elderly man with two children in his arms would be extremely difficult. You know what, Mr. Bennett? I'll go to the police tomorrow. Maybe Bill White could help us for registration of guardianship. He's obviously much more powerful here, Tina suggested. Fortunately, Billy White turned out to be a sympathetic person with a big and kind heart. He actually helped Tina with collecting necessary documents. On the way to Henry Bennett's home, he tried his best to support the girl who decided to do such a responsible thing. Tina knew what kind of place the orphan house was, and she absolutely didn't want those children to face all the hardships and losses of orphan life. Therefore, she calmed the old man and reassured him that she wouldn't leave him in such situation. Since that day, after work, Tina was always in a hurry to Mr. Bennett simultaneously buying everything she needed for the kids in a supermarket. Taking care for the little Bob and Sam, she came to love them, as if they were her truly sons. With the Mr. Bennett's consent, Tina still applied for custody of the children. Billy White, for his part, was doing everything to speed up this process and help the old man with that problem. One day, Mr. Bennett, with a mysterious grin, suggested Tina and Bill to move into his house. What? It will be even better this way for the kids mainly. They certainly need parental care now, the old man said in a tone that tolerating no objections. Young people somehow at first refused and embarrassed to look into each other's eyes. Actually, deep inside, them both had fell for each other, but were scared to admit it to themselves. Time passed. Slowly, pulled together with shared problems and growing chemistry between them, Tina and Billy became closer and considered themselves a couple. Mr. Bennett understood everything, and likely smiling, was glad for both of them. Although, recently, there have been fewer reasons for a good mood. The old man's health was rapidly deteriorating, so Mr. Bennett was waiting his own death. Henry Bennett passed away in spring. Only three days short of his 70th birthday, his death was a big blow to Tina and Billy, who considered the old man a friend, a father, and in some ways even a teacher. By that time, young people were in a relationship, which revolving gradually and seamlessly. A year after the death of Henry Bennett, Billy did a proposal to his beloved. Tina, clutching Bobby and Sam to her, of course agreed. The orphan girl finally felt the true happiness because since that moment she had a husband and children who loved her. And six months after the wedding, Tina left the hairdresser's right on maternity leave. Former colleagues enviously looked after her, realizing